Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. I'm going to be speaking about Padrino, the elegant web framework. Just uh, first off, really quick, who am I? Uh, my name's Joshua Hall, and you can find me at Twitter, uh, at JoshBuddy, uh, as well, too. Uh, if you want to get the slides for this presentation, uh, just go ahead. You can go to that GitHub uh, link there, or as well, I just tweeted where they are. Just clone the repo, and you can view them. It's a bunch of images, I'm sorry. But uh, then you can follow along. So Padrino, a web framework, uh, you might be asking the question, why would I care about yet another web framework in Ruby? And the simplest reason I can give you is that Padrino is built on top of Sinatra. And I, I, I don't know about you. Like, first of all, everyone here, has everyone used Sinatra? OK, cool. Yeah. I don't even need a show of hands. Everyone knows what Sinatra is. And the reason why everyone knows what Sinatra is is like, here's the example from the homepage of Sinatra. That's five lines of code. And you can show that to anyone at all. They understand instantly what's going on. And then as well, too, you know, you think about when you're trying to teach a web framework to someone who's maybe new to programming or new to programming for the web, and you're trying to get them into Rails, and there's all these directories and all these files everywhere. It's, it's kind of complex. It's a steep learning curve at first, versus something like Sinatra which is just so simple and so easy to instantly grasp. So Padrino is built on top of this foundation. And uh, this is a good foundation. When I first saw Sinatra, my thought was, well, why didn't I think of that? That's so simple. And uh, you know, I was a little jealous. I'm like, man, you know, that's so obvious. And if you actually do a Google search for Sinatra-inspired web frameworks, you can basically find a Sinatra lookalike in any language you want. And this is just like on the first page of Google myself is what I found. So Sinatra is really cool. And you know, we've covered it's easy to learn. It's minimal. Uh, it appeals to the Ruby hacker and all of us that like to write our own thing. And it doesn't give you anything extra. You only take what you need in Sinatra. But there's a problem. And that is if you write a lot of Sinatra web applications, you run into this thing where you're reinventing the wheel every time. You're doing the same common patterns. And if you're a good programmer, you take these common patterns, you abstract them, you put them in a gem, uh, you have Sinatra plugins, and you use these things. So if you just take a look at the Sinatra book, for instance, here's a quote from it. It says, using partials in your views is a great way to keep them clean. Although the last talk contradicted that. Uh, Since Sinatra takes the hands-off approach to a framework design, you'll have to implement a partial handler yourself. And that's, you know what? totally within their rights to tell us that. Go do it yourself. I love that. I love that Sinatra doesn't assume I need partials. If it's just a REST API, I don't need partials. So why give me something I don't need? So what Padrino attempts to do is it comes up with a common set of extensions in Sinatra that makes Sinatra uh, really useful. And like Sinatra, all these components, you take them or you leave them. So here's just a really uh, quick high-level overview of the components that you have available in Padrino. You have uh, application and model generation and the rest of it. You have really advanced routing. Uh, you have helpers for doing all your view side stuff, so outputs, tags, assets, uh, forms, and the rest of it. As well, you have a really nice mailing component for just sending emails out. Uh, you have a Django-like uh, admin interface that uh, gives you scaffolding very quickly, gives you a beautiful looking admin uh, panel. As well, you have a unified logger that you can use. Uh, it has a really good code reloading. So you never have to quit your Sinatra app and reload it in order to have it reload in dev mode. It's really excellent. And as well, it has uh, localization built in. So, well, not built in. You can take localization if you want. And then that uh, lets you do it in any language you want. So just uh, looking over what Padrino is, uh, like I've mentioned, it's built on top, on top of Sinatra. So feel free to use all of your existing Sinatra extensions. Uh, it follows then that it's built on top of Rack. You can use any piece of Rack middleware you want. Uh, and then that as well, we have that uh, approach of parsimony. You just take what you want, and you leave behind the stuff that you don't want. In terms of what you get out of the box with Padrino, you get an MVC structure. And there's a couple different uh, types of structure you can choose. As well, you get a really nice set of generators that uh, understand the components that you've picked for your application. And then here's an easy uh, pathway to migrate from Sinatra to something more advanced. So if you've written a prototype, for instance, in Sinatra, it, maybe you don't want to port the whole thing over to Rails. Maybe you just need a couple more little things to make it really awesome. 
this is a great way to get into that. So for the first feature I'm going to show you, that's the, uh, the generation. And here's uh, some of the switches out of the box that you get with the Padrino generator. You can pick your ORM. And uh, for instance, those last two uh, ORMs were just added today. Uh, we just had a release today. So you cover basically every kind of uh, data ORM that you can think of. You have a wide variety of test suites you can pick from, uh, as well JavaScript, rendering, uh, style sheet mocking. You have all these components built in. But what's really nice about this is when you pick which components you want, and then it comes time to actually generate something, it's the same commands to say generate a model. So you generate a product model. But Padrino remembers which uh, things you've picked, and it applies those accordingly. So say, for instance, in this example here, and you uh, generated for, that for the bottom one there, Active Record and Riot. So here, for instance, is what your model would look like. And it extends from Active Record base. Here's your uh, blank test for you to fill in. And this is uh, Riot. If you haven't used Riot, by the way, it's a really awesome, uh, really brief, concise testing framework in Ruby. It's really cool. And uh, this is exactly what you get out of the box with the generator. But you know, backing up to our uh, example here, say we use SQL and RSpec. So here's uh, what it looks like if you've used these options to generate your project. Uh, now you have it uh, extending from SQL model. And then as well, too, you have a, an RSpec looking test. Again, it's blank. You have to fill in the blanks, but it gives you a really nice set of blanks. As well, too, uh, for generating a project, here's what uh, uh, one of the styles of project layouts looks like. This is called the tiny. Uh, layout, and this is uh, very much akin to the MERB flat layout, and uh, pretty much puts all your controllers in one file, all your models in one file, the rest of it. Here's what a normal layout looks like, and it gives you directories for your controllers, directories for your models. And if this looks familiar, that's because it's very, very familiar. This is very similar to a Rails application layout. So let's take a look at generating some really basic things. So for instance, generating a controller. So you want to generate a controller. You want to put three actions on it, index, new, create, with those verbs. Here's what you get when you generate. That looks about right to me. Say you want to generate a model. Again, you uh, specify some fields that you want to generate. And it understands, of course, which ORM you've picked. And it gives you the right migration and the right uh, base class for that. So you just want a migration. It understands this magic syntax of add fields to users or add x to users. And you can give it a bunch of fields. And it just gives you exactly what you'd expect. It creates those fields, or otherwise it deletes them on the downside. And of course, this respects your ORM that you've picked. As well, too, generating a mailer. Uh, this is something that I'm sure we've all had to do. You can give it a few default actions, and it uh, generates for you a nice default mailer. Fill in the blanks. Another really nice thing in Padrino is sub-applications. And uh, what this lets you do is uh, create little apps inside your big project. So for instance, take this example here. You uh, build a, a project called Catalog, and you have an app inside called 1, an app inside called 2. Maybe like more appropriately, you would like generate an app called Blog inside there. Maybe you'd have like a forum, customer support. You have a bunch of sub-applications that uh, aren't really tied together in any way whatsoever. So by generating those, you get those mounted at those mount points. And then those uh, can each of those be referenced by the different generators. So you can build controllers for your forum. You build controllers for your blog, whatever it is. And just a note about this is this is really cool. Because then, say you've written a really great blog for your website. Now you can just copy that and steal it and use it for a completely different site that you've built in Padrino. These are reusable apps. And as well, these are just standard rack. Sinatra applications. You can use it inside Rails 3. You can use it inside anything you'd like. It's very standard out of the box. So now another uh, great feature that Padrino gives you is the routing and the controller side of things. So this is very familiar to us if we've, if we've used uh, Sinatra. And this is what it looks like in Sinatra. Here's uh, the same example converted for Padrino. You don't have to do this. But if you do do this, you get this. You get URLs. So you can not have to hard code URLs everywhere inside your views. Take a more complicated example, say uh, account with an ID. Uh, so in Padrino, again, this is how you could write this uh, account. You say with ID. And again, you can just generate the URL with uh, your account on it. You can shorten this and just make it look like this instead, URL account 3. 
and it understands where the parameters go and it correctly does its thing. Say that you don't want to be restricted to that style of URL for whatever reason. You can change it up using the map option. And here you can put slash ID slash colon ID to map that variable or dash uh, colon ID. It doesn't matter. You can put it in brackets. It doesn't, you can do anything you'd like with it. And you can as well do regex matching on those too. Uh, if you've noticed here, one of the key things is this controller's method. And this is really what lets you do some really neat things with uh, the routing and controllers inside of Sinatra and inside of Padrino. So we're going to look at these uh, areas here. So for the first one, namespacing. Uh, maybe you have a bunch of routes and you want to put them behind slash something. So in this example here, you want it inside slash admin. So now when you go to render this URL, you say URL admin index, and this gives you slash admin slash index. But you're not limited to uh, just doing that. As well, you could have multiple controllers uh, inside here. And then as well, each of those can have their own namespace so that you can separate them out that way. And then do URL admi uh, admin index, URL user index, and they all go to the right place. Uh, one of the really great features that Padrino provides is provides. And in this case here, we often uh, need to do like response to uh, in Rails, or you need to do some kind of uh, uh, content type matching. So here's your, your normal uh, index, uh, just a get. But here it is with the provides. So now this will match on .js or match on the right content type. And this will return some JavaScript. Uh, often in controllers, you have multiple things that you want to be able to provide. So you just supply it an array of uh, types to match for. As well, there's a catch-all type, uh, colon any. And this uh, lets you match the rest of them. But this can get a bit uh, tiresome. You probably want to dry up your code if you have a lot of uh, controllers that look something like this, a lot of controller actions. So you just provide that at the, uh, in the, at the class level for the controller. You say provides JS any. And now all of the actions inside there will respect those provides that you've passed it and respect the extensions that are passed to it in the URL. And as well, too, you can override that again at the action level. If maybe you have an action it doesn't need JS, you can just uh, override that on a per action basis. Uh, something that Padrino has is filters. Of course, Sinatra has filters, too. But where this gets interesting is, like for instance, this example here would work in Sinatra. So you can just assign a variable, have it available in your views. But you can also use uh, Padrino before uh, filters to route to a different set of actions. So if this before block here returns false, it doesn't match on that controller. And in this example here, that first set of controllers, if the user isn't an admin, it will not match that. And it'll look for a next available match. And in this case here, it will uh, go down to the second one because there's no before filter to uh, stop it. And as, of course, you have the after filters, just like you have in Sinatra too. Another great feature is nesting. And uh, here you have, uh, again, just a normal uh, index view uh, on top of a, a details controller. But maybe you want this nested inside of a product. You can do that just using parent. You can do it two levels deep. Or you can, again, put this up on the controller level so that everything inside your controller nests that way. As well, we have layouts. So if you have a controller, you can disable the layout for all the views inside. Uh, as well, too, uh, you can provide a custom layout for certain views. You can do that on a per action basis or on a per controller basis. It's very flexible and makes your code incredibly dry. So for the next section, we'll look at the uh, output helpers quickly. You have content for and yield content. So in this uh, example here, where you have a view that needs to have uh, a special style sheet, you can just capture that content. And then inside your layout, you just yield that content back out again. So it's just as though you had written this here. And just put that style sheet link tag directly there. As well, too, you have content capture, uh, concat uh, content and capture HTML. And this lets you like capture a piece of HTML, wrap it inside a tag. So here's a highly contrived example, uh, wrap with tag. What an awesome paragraph. Should be pretty understandable. It's very few lines of code. And it just makes your life easy. So here you go. There's the output. And as well, too, we have tag helpers. So uh, just doing a normal tag, something like this, where you have uh, an attribute and a bunch of options. 
as well it can have content inside. There's some nice uh, syntactical sugar for doing a content tag. And again, this is a, a tag name with some content inside it. Uh, you can pass attributes to it, and as well, too, it can capture the block. So you can just do it in this style, uh, the last one here. As well, too, there's a little bit of sugar for doing input tags. So this just makes it a little bit nicer for uh, writing out input tags inside Padrino. As well, you have helpers for uh, all the assets. So this is just a common set of uh, asset helpers. So doing uh, flash messages, uh, doing link tos, and it obeys the if and unless uh, link to uh, syntax that I think Rails and Action View use. You have a mail to link. As well, you can do images, style sheets, JavaScripts, fav icons, feeds. Go take a look at the docs, but it makes it very easy to do this sort of thing. As well, too, of course, we have forms. And uh, this should be fairly familiar, I would uh, I think, if you've been using any Rails at all. And here you can provide a custom HTTP method. You give it a URL. And then you organize things with field set tags. You have your inputs. And you have a beautiful form at the end of it. Uh, of course, as well, you want to build a form around a particular object that comes from your ORM. So you have a form builder as well. And this just takes some object that you give it, and uh, it builds a form around it. So again, you have your uh, a form tag. You get error messages back from it. And then as well, too, you have a bunch of fields. And notice here, too, that uh, in that bottom part there, you actually have a form for a sub part of that object. So you can create nested forms. And as well, there's more nested uh, form support, more advanced support coming. So what if, for instance, the object you're giving it doesn't support uh, an errors method, which is underlyingly what this is using? Well, Padrino gives you an abstract form builder, which lets you uh, create your own forms. And here's the methods that you have to override or not override, depending on what you want to do with your form. And then once you actually get out into the views, you can just specify, hey, use this builder when you're building a form. Or you can just set it right across your application. Always use this form builder. So it makes it really easy to override and just do custom forms. As well, too, Padrino comes with a set of format helpers. And a lot of this is just borrowed from uh, various other frameworks, escaping HTML, pluralizing, word wrap, you know, very typical things that you want to do with text. So in our example, we looked at uh, rendering. And uh, Padrino gives you a couple nice bits of sugar for rendering. So here is the Sinatra way of doing things. You say herb index. And that's great. That works just fine. Uh, it gets a little hairy, though, when you start having nested views. And you have like colon or two sim or whatever. It just looks a little uh, fuzzy. Padrino gives you a different way of doing this. And both can still be used. You just say render herb index or render himmel index. Or you just say render index. And in that case, it will just find the first engine available to it. Uh, that matches, um, it'll, rather, it'll find the first view available that matches one of the engines installed. As well, too, you have the partial helpers. So this uh, just looks for underscore dot item, and then again, looks for an available engine to it. And you can pass it an object, or you can pass it a collection of objects, and it will render over them and give you a counter inside if you're doing a collection. And as well, you can write your own helpers. This is uh, more or less lifted from uh, identical to Sinatra. I believe it is actually identical to Sinatra. You just define uh, a method that you want to use, render pony, and then it will put out the string pony time. Or you can uh, just hook up modules. And of course, these methods are available inside your views and controllers. Another feature uh, in Padrino that hasn't quite landed yet, but it's very close to landing, is the uh, unobtrusive JavaScript helpers. And this uh, is available on forms and links. So it's coming soon, but we have support for all of the scripting engines that we support. And so for instance, here's uh, what it looks like. You just say remote true. And then in terms of the HTML, this generates uh, data remote equals true, just like that. And then that's picked up by the JavaScript, and it does the right thing. And uh, the same thing with links. You say remote true. It uh, inserts this custom attribute and uh, confirmations for destroying things. And then as well, it supports uh, custom HTTP methods. So one of the, the hot things in Petrino is being able to generate an admin section. So here's just a screenshot of what the uh, admin section looks like out of the box. Uh, as well, it comes with a variety of different themes. And let me show you how to create this. So here you create a model, and you give it some stuff. You migrate your model. 
And then here's the, the really important command. You say admin page, and then you give it the model that you want to generate on, and you start Padrino up. This uh, admin section is uh, ORM agnostic, so it supports all of our ORMs. I didn't add the last two that we just released today, so it actually supports all of them seriously. And so, for instance, uh, if you take a look at the scaffolding that it generates, for active record, for instance, it does the right thing, account.find, update attributes. Here's the same example in SQL, and it's doing the right thing for SQL. As well, too, it gives you uh, an authentication layer for the admin section that's really easy to, to hook up and set up. So you, uh, inside your application, you just enable authentication, enable store location, and then you set a login page. And then you can just define uh, which pages you want to have protected. So in this case, customer's orders, uh, cart checkout, these are protected pages uh, for any role. So you need to have some role to satisfy it. But you can also use this for more complex uh, sort of ACL role-based uh, authentication. So say, for instance, uh, you have this example here. And at the top, you want to control for uh, everything uh, from root onwards. But you want to allow them to go through slash sessions for any role at all. And then for the admin section, they are the only ones that can access slash admin. And then editors can go to posts and categories and edit stuff that way too. Next feature I'll show you is the mailer. Uh, so here's a, just a really nice thing to have. You can just send an email in one line. I only broke it to two lines because the slide it just wouldn't quite fit. Uh, you know, looks very simple. Form to, uh, sorry, from to, subject, body. As well, too, you can break out these mailers into reusable bits, uh, a little more uh, complex like this. And this example here, you can just generate it again with uh, a generator, and it will create that mailer for you. And then you just inside your views directory, you get a, a mailers, and inside there, you can create all your uh, email templates. One of the nice things you get is uh, multi-part goodness. So take, for example, uh, you have a text and you have a plain part. You can just specify those two parts. Or you can even dry that up further. And you can just say provides plain and HTML and just render it to a path. And it finds the correct one based on the content type. And it just renders out the right one for the mailer. And as well, too, you have an ad file. You have a bunch of other things. But if you really want to know everything you have, go take a look at this gem, the mail gem in Ruby. It's excellent. It's awesome. And it's what's uh, underlying all of the Padrino mailer functionality. As well, too, you can set uh, defaults for the mailer. So you can have a, an application-wide default from, or you can have it on a per-mailer basis. This makes your code, again, just more dry and easy to understand. Something else Padrino gives you is uh, localization. So out of the box, here's the languages we support. Uh, we just added uh, Dutch and Polish today, I think. And these are for the admin section. You have all these languages available to you. And then as well, too, it's uh, pretty easy to just add your own. So all you have to do is grab these four YAML files, translate them, just email them back to us or whatever. We've had lots of people contribute languages, and it's pretty awesome. In your application, then, you just specify the locale that you want. You have a, a YAML file inside your locale directory. And then you can just render it out. Again, this is all provided by this excellent gem, so go take a look and see what it gives you. For models, uh, we have a really nice uh, little thing where if you create a model, then you can just run a rake task to get the translation of that. And then that just provides you with a blank YAML that you then just fill in the blanks and start localizing away. And it separates every model into its own YAML file, so nothing's going to trample over anything else. And then when you get to your forms, uh, this was a slide from previous. You had label colon name. And why the colon name? Because that then lets you do a localization lookup on that. So in this example here, it will look under en account name, and it will fill in the correct thing there. Uh, another hot uh, new feature that was added is templates and plugins. Uh, so beyond what you have from Sinatra plugins, there's uh, as well some Padrino plugins that are quite useful. Let me show you templates first, though. So if you have like a common uh, application style that you're creating over and over, we give you a, a template DSL. And this looks more or less like Thor's uh, DSL with more stuff on top. Here's just a sample of part of a template. Uh, you can see uh, you know, we ask some questions of the developer. Uh, we instantiate a project. We do some other things. We ask some more questions. We have some output. So it just gives you a really nice way if you're doing the same application over and over. 
And then as well, too, uh, on the plugin side, if you just uh, go G plugins uh, dash dash list, take a look. We have 26 plugins available right now. And here's the list of them. I'm sure you can find something there that's useful. And these plugins are incredibly simple to write. So just as an example here, here's the Google Analytics plugin. This is literally what it looks like. It's five lines. And all it does is just require the, the Google Analytics rack uh, gem, and then it just initializes it for you. So that's all well and good, but uh, I think something that everyone loves is benchmarks. And uh, I love these too. I love things that go fast. So how does Padrino do on benchmarks? Well, we have some benchmarks from 9.10, and you can see here uh, rendering a, a string inline or rendering a basic uh, herb file, we do pretty well, not quite as well as uh, Merb. If you get to a more complex application, we're on top, and uh, we beat Sinatra handily too, so that's a really nice thing to see. So it's a very fast, uh, low weight application framework. And as well, too, someone did a, um, an awesome blog post on Romaze versus Padrino. And this was the numbers that they came up with. Again, this is a bit old. So I'd love to see what the numbers say now. I'm sure it's a bit faster. And uh, you know, again, great results. So take a look. In terms of the team itself, uh, it was originally created, I believe, by Nathan and Arthur. And they're both in California. And then David joined. He runs like a 10-man web shop off in Italy. And uh, he, they use Padrino now for everything. And then as well, there's me and Florian and Lori, and we all contribute. We're on the core team. And then as well to do, uh, as well today, we just added uh, Lucis, and he's working on Redis support inside Padrino. And as it's pretty awesome. And then as well too, uh, come get in touch with us. There's a, a screencast online. Uh, as well, we're on Freenode. And because of the fact that the core members are all over the world, like we have the Italian one and then us, there's always someone in the channel. And uh, the channel's pretty busy, so it's a good place to be. As well, check us out on GitHub. And then as well, we have a Twitter account that you can follow, find out uh, the latest, what's going on. And thank you very much. <laughs>